Welcome back. Thank you. We're uh, in South America right now. We're in the jungle. Um, no, we're not. We're in the hills above Santa Cruz, and I'm here with, with Anthony. Uh, Anthony's Overland Bound member, 9521. Uh, and we're going to take a look at this awesome rig, this awesome Toyota behind me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about where you got it? I knew the guy who had this thing in high school. He threw a lift and uh, super swampers on it. It just looked cool. So I, I always loved the truck. And then one day I'm getting my hair cut. His mom used to cut my hair. And I see the thing parked under a tree, covered in leaves, looking pretty tattered. And I, I asked, I said, what's wrong with the Land Cruiser? How come, how come it's just abandoned? And they're like, Blown head gasket, too expensive to repair. Give me 2,500 bucks at yours. So. <laughs> I know you're all jealous. <laughs> this wow. was a long time ago. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 2,500 bucks, no problem. Yeah. Uh, limp the thing home, steam pouring out of both sides, slid in sideways. Uh, did a motor swap in my parents' yard. Uh, at the time, I didn't have two pennies to rub together, so I sold my street bike. Mm -hmm. And with the money I had from the street bike, I was able to get this thing back on the road. Tell us what we're looking at here. Let's cover the basics. Your make model, the engine you put in it, um, and run down the drivetrain. Like, what did you build? Should we open it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead. So it would be like a Escalade. Uh-huh. The original is FJ60 what year? 84. An 84 FJ60. Yeah. So the 84 FJ60 had a mm -hmm. 4.2 liter yep. straight six, 100 horsepower, 10 miles per gallon. Right. Now, and, and it weighed like 800 pounds. 100 horsepower, 10 miles to the gallon. And 800 Tractor pounds. motor, tractor now, motor. Now it's 400 plus, yep. weighs closer to 500 pounds and gets 18 miles to the gallon. Right. And it's just... This yeah. is the advantage. It's easy. Right. It's yeah. just easy. And then to make things simpler, advanced adapters, makes an overdrive that acts as the conversion. So I used the bell housing off the Chevy, the clutch off the Chevy, and then from there, it's just an advanced adapters overdrive, which yep. has the correct uh, input shaft and the correct output. Yep. And then everything behind that's all Toyota. It's all the original Toyota. So, you know, at the time when I'm trying to, you know, cobble this together as best I can, I mean, this just dropped in. There was no moving cross members or modifying anything in the back. But it sounds like you had a fairly straightforward install. Motor mounts and exhaust. Wow. And then other than that, just some, some wiring and plumbing. Uh -huh. uh, the radiator is the same one that came out of it, uh, that, that was in it, I mean. Yep. Um, yeah. It's... Let's, talk about, <clears throat> let's talk about some of the other goodies that you have in here. Right at the front there. So the, the intake, that is connected to the snorkel, but this motor breathes a lot uh -huh. and that snorkel isn't enough. So it's restrictive. Right. So the thing you're touching right now actually also feeds it. Okay. And I have a little <clears throat> um, gate there. You can see. Yep. I can close this gate if I want to just use the snorkel. Oh, I see. Got it. Now okay. it's just coming out of the snorkel. Now, what is that? <clears throat> how does that impact your performance when you do that? If well, I only use it off-road, and yep. off-road we're never really, you know, but, uh, going fast. All, all out, ideally, as yeah. fast as necessary, as slow as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so Very it works cool. Fine. And then, yep, all the breathers for the transmission, transfer case, and both dips are plumbed into this, so they're essentially all the way up there. Air compressor right on the inside here. Yep, yep. That's so cool. the, the ARB single and go into a one gallon tank. And uh -huh. then uh, since we tow, we tow with the thing, I have airbags over the leaves in the back. Uh, there's a, a fitting right here uh -huh. that I can use with that, you know, to air up tires and use air tools. ARB single with a one gallon tank. About how long do you think it takes you to go from, say, 10 PSI to street pressure, 35 or so? It's not optimal. Five. 10 minutes, something around okay. there. I haven't so, timed it exactly, but it's, it's not good. So my compressor <laughs> is nine minutes, just so you just, yeah. uh, And how do you like your tire? I tires are very important, and, and they're gonna ask us about tires. So tell me what tires you have and why you chose them. They are the Terra Grapplers. We just kind of based it on noise rating 
and mm -hmm. uh, load capacity and wear. And they're a good all-terrain. Do um, you have, I see that breaker back there. Is that all oh, your accessories? No, so okay. there's two breakers. Okay. So uh, one, this one here is for just the air stuff. So uh -huh. I have one 100 amp that's all air stuff. Oh, very cool, okay. Yeah, so if I ever have any issue with that, you know, it's isolated here. Uh -huh. And then this here is where the Chevy meets Toyota. Interesting. So everything cab back is still exactly as it was Toyota and yep. everything we're, I guess, firewall back and then firewall forward is all Chevy. Unmodified Chevy harness and then unmodified Toyota harness. Cause I really like, the goal was we're never gonna get rid of the vehicle. Right. We're gonna have it forever. And I'm totally gonna forget what I did. And so now I have a Chevy manual and a Toyota manual and I can open them up and I can see everything exactly as it ought to be yep. and I can fix it accordingly. So we're gonna, we're gonna give Witsen a shout out. Um, Witsen has all the stuff you didn't know you need for your, for your off-road Toyota. No, you're hundred yeah. percent because going yeah. through, he's got solutions to things. You just, you didn't even know were problems. Yeah, he's got a bunch of billet you know, hardware, you know, just some uh, fire extinguisher mounts, um, a way to use your, your ashtray for a different thing. Yeah. Um, but then all the way up to technical stuff too. He has turbo kits and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. out now. Yeah. Uh, your lights, those main headlights, mm -hmm. they're okay. They're, yeah. they're an off brand Uh huh. and 99% of the time they work great, but yep. recently we were in Death Valley and we got stuck in a snowstorm and uh -huh. these things were useless. Ah, uh, were they just bright white and they were illuminating the snow? All I could see was the like snow. Like snow blind, yeah. Yeah, I mean, my friends were all just, oh, this is great, this is so much fun. And I'm like, I'm panicked. <laughs> all I can see is snow. And so I'm trying every different combination of lights on this and all yeah. I can see is snow. These on the other hand are great. Yep. I love those. Uh, they're Baja. Um, La Paz, they're, they're an older headlight, they're HIDs, but uh -huh. the HID gives a real different pattern than the LEDs. Mm -hmm. And so I stick with them. I really like them. They're rugged as heck. Uh, and you went with mile marker. I did. That is a good winch. It is. Yeah. It's always been great. Uh, I originally came with a metal rope uh, or metal mm -hmm. cable. Uh, the synthetic line is just, it, to me, is a no brainer. Yep. Uh, I actually carry a spare just in case. There's one down here. Oh, I saw bag. that. I was going to ask you what is in that bag. That is just another uh, rope. Oh, another rope. Oh, yeah. very cool. What else on the front end of this uh, rig? I, well, I don't have the antennas attached. It's yep. just the bases, but uh -huh. um, that one there is for our ham radio. Yep. You and I together, you know, yep. got, we our, got licenses. our license together. Yep. Uh, yeah. Awesome. I've been converting everybody. Good. And then this one is for APRS. Okay. So I've been oh, using, interesting. yeah, I've been using APRS droid. Okay. on occasion I do just go out by myself mm -hmm. and I'll just turn on the, the APRS and yep. then my wife, she can pull up the, the web interface. She can see where I am. She could text me. Um, yeah. Yep. Without any cell reception. Um, what else up here? ARB bumper, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, why do you choose ARB? I'm a huge fan of all the Australian, uh, <laughs> four wheel drives. And I yeah. just, that, that was my you know, goal just to have something very much, you know, right yeah. out of the outback. Well, you can't go wrong. I mean, with ARB. That's it for the front end. All right, let's walk around the side here. Um, now let's cover a little bit about your suspension. Okay. So one of the things that people love about these, these rigs, solid axle, mm -hmm. run us through the, run us through your suspension. All right, from front to back. Sure. Yep. Stock front axle or uh -huh. stock front housing. So it's been gusseted, um, it's got RCV uh, axles, it's uh -huh. got the Marlin high steer. Um, those are kind of standard fare things if you want to beef up this axle. There are some weak points, it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, burr fields are a thing that if you're a Toyota guy, it's like, oh, broken burr field. Uh, stock springs, a um, little taller shackles. They've been moved to the back and then the whole thing's been moved forward about an inch and a half. And that's just for clearance. There's, there's, there's no, kit apart from the high steer uh-huh so the shocks for instance are they're just fox 2.0 reservoirs and then the hydraulic bumps and then there's like there's little issues that you come up with you know like when you do spring over which this is yeah then if you don't move the shackles to the back it wanders all over the place right so then you move the shackles to the back well then you get dive and then yep. you know the 
the steering is a little more difficult because you're running the larger tires. So then you just kind of chase the, the issues down the road. Right. And I feel like I've gotten to the end of the road and now this is, this is a really good setup for a leaf spring over axle. How, how does it drive for you? Like how does it track at this stage? Perfect. I, no hands on the steering wheel, 80 miles an hour straight down the road. The, the, the mindset I have now is you build it around the tire. You choose the size tire you want, and yep. then you start moving from there. And that's and that's the issues you have. I have a PSC pump now. I have the uh, hydro assist, the uh, the PSC hydro assist, mm -hmm. and that like in itself that fixed tons of issues. Moving back from there, so the front end or well, the front axle it's a nine and a half inch diff. Uh, that means four ten gears, ARB locker. Now for the rear. I wanted to keep it the same, but the factory uh, axle, it's, it's a semi float and they have their issues. So I borrowed one from yours. I have the 90, I think it's a 98 FJ80 mm -hmm. full float now. Okay. But sa again, same nine and a half inch diff, uh, another ARB locker. And then, uh, I mean, even the bearings are the same front to back. Cool. So it's just hyper simple. Your sliders, what are these? All pro. All pro? Yeah. Okay. And they'll they'll support the weight of your vehicle? Yeah, yeah. We use Great. the high the, the hijack on them. Mm-hmm. Very and cool. We've had it we've had it turtled on rocks and just kind of sits there and teeters on them. Great. Uh, sliders, not steps. Again, for those of you just getting started, they're called sliders because you can actually you, you rest your the, the side of your vehicle on rocks and slide down the rock and with with no damage except for the scraping on the bottom of that, which we don't really care about. No, and they're beat up. Yeah. And, and they're supposed to be. Cool. You've got some rock lights, I see, which is great. They're the cheapest eBay rock or LED lights you can find. Because, they work? Well, because you break them too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you break them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so there, there's no reason. I mean, I keep toying with the idea of getting nice ones, but yeah. they work fine. So then in the rear. Yeah. Let's um, talk about again, the rear. I keep the uh, the sway bars attached. That's the the FJ80 sway bar. Um, I never disconnect them. The springs are soft enough to where it works fine. Uh, do you know the name of your wheels? I think they're ATX. It's it's important for um, some folks. It's like not. I always I ask like I have stock I have stock wheels on mine. I always ask because I always get asked. Right? I chose People these, are like, what wheels are those? I chose those so, wheels because they advertised they were Teflon coated. I never clean them. I just hose them off. Oh, okay. That's cool. And then you've got a uh, an awning. This is a shade. Just pull straight out. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. It's, it's just the, the real simple one that goes out like eight feet. Uh-huh. Um, we have the one, the big 270 on the trailer yep. that drops the sides. Um, cool. It's the uh, Overland Pros version, the older version of yours. Okay. Got it. Uh, works awesome. Yeah. It's and not, you have to, in certain environments, um, you have to have shade. Yeah. And I mean, I'm stating the obvious for people who grew up in those kind of climates. I know I grew up in Humboldt County. It's always foggy. So I, you know, but yeah, you go in the uh, uh, it, uh, Mojave, Mojave Desert, Baja, those oh, areas. Yeah. It's it, like you have to have shade. When it's 100 degrees in the shade. Yeah. Yeah. One of the other issues with the spring over is the axle wrap. We just did a, a real simple track bar, uh, rough stuff, you know, DIY weld it track bar. Yeah. And works great. Cool. Yeah. The thing we have to acknowledge is is you've got 400 horsepower under the hood. Um, yeah, yeah, that makes so its you, own issues. Yeah, you have to you, you have to address some things. Yeah, you come up with weird issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, otherwise on the on the rear, it's just a it's a homebrew setup. It's yeah. Uh, the the tow point the tow points are attached to the trailer hitch. They're just welded onto the trailer hitch. Uh huh. Um, high lift jack off of the tire carrier with the jerry can mount. And then this, the antenna is actually for the CB. So I still have a CB in the truck, but I don't use it. So I found a splitter that allows me to use the antenna for my FM radio. So now oh, cool. the, the antenna is really just a great FM, FM radio antenna. Very cool. Um, so you've got the 15 extra horsepower and, the, and that's probably how you get the 18 miles to the gallon, Street right? cred. Yeah, and yeah, totally, absolutely. This badge, over on our website, 
you can, it, in about, you can see our core principles, our founding principles, that's what that badge stands for. So go over there and read our founding principles if you guys want to learn a little bit more about us. I like the kind of the condition it's in. It still has some dents. Yep. And if yep. I make it too nice, I won't use it. It is gorgeous. I, I, I love this vehicle. It's awesome. Thank you. All right, shall we look on the inside? Yeah. All right, I'll go over here and look in this side. Did this come with electric windows? No. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I was, I was like, oh, I was like, hey, where's the thing? Cool, so first thing I noticed, electric windows. You put electric windows in it. It has an alarm. It has le electric windows and electric locks, and I tried to make it look wow. as factory as I could. Well, I love the way this interior looks. Streamlined, It do you've achieved that goal. It does look fairly factory, yet you can see that you've, you've got some modern conveniences in here. Yeah, there, there's a real easy tendency to litter the dash with junk. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's like, again, it's, it's like the weight thing. It's just the, every mm -hmm. time you're like, oh, look at that. No, you know, don't need more crap. Yep. The tablet works a lot of the different stuff on the truck. So, for instance, the gauges, uh, we have the OBD interface now because we have the new motor. Yeah. So we can run all the gauges on that. Mm -hmm. uh, the camera for the front end, we can run on here. Mm -hmm. And with this hood, that comes in really handy. Yeah, this is a porch. Yeah. <laughs> so if you open up the yep. glove box, there's the radio. Yep. Got it. For APRS, mm -hmm. and then the uh, the interface that you interact with is here. Mm -hmm. uh, solar controller. There's a solar panel on the roof. Um, truck never needs to be charged. I can sit for a month and start it right up. Very cool. One of the other cool things I did was I put cruise control in it and cruise oh. controls on the factory uh, stock. So it's a stock off of a, uh, a later, uh, like a mini truck. Cool. And the cruise control works. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, because you have uh, 400 horses under the, under the hood, uh, your cruise control probably doesn't disengage when you go up a hill. No, I keep it in overdrive. <laughs> <laughs> Wheels keep turning. Yeah, here's, here's the overdrive. Um, how do you like the uh, the air lockers, the ARB air lockers? I haven't had any issues with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I put them in myself. I I really tried hard not to hire anybody to do anything on this vehicle. Mm -hmm. The only things anybody's ever done was to tune it, to paint it, and to put exhaust on it. Got it. Uh, everything else I did. So I geared the diffs. I put the the lockers in there. They are the simplest, most rugged things. Great. There's there's no special uh, fluid you got to run. There's no maintenance. Um, they, just, they just work. So just keeping it super simple. Very cool. What about anything else? Any, uh, uh, any, any fridge or anything else in the back? I mean, little, little hacks here and there, yeah. you know, things that just kind of fix some of the, um, the fact that the vehicle's 35 years old and mm -hmm. you know, things have improved since then. So yeah, it is, uh, love this, this truck. It's gorgeous. Uh, Anthony, Thank you very much. Yeah. Really, really appreciate you taking the time today to, to share your vehicle and the story uh, with us. Um, can people ask you questions in the comments? Of course, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll answer any of them. Okay, very cool. There's always things that I don't think about. Ask Anthony questions in the comments. We'll, we'll answer them for you. You guys, if you like this video, of course, like and subscribe. We have other videos like this, so go check them out. Hope to see you guys on the trail. Outfit and explore.